Hello Set Apart Saints, this is David. You probably noticed I used Set Apart Saints up front in my videos and the reason is is that saints in Revelation and other places is pointing to sacred people who are striving to be pure and blameless and holy and set apart to me as someone who's hungering for scriptural truth. They pray for it and they're seeking it out. So that's why I use that term. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about significant people and events which were foretold by Messiah in Revelation. Of course, he didn't name them. He didn't, you know, give us their names and, and he gave us symbols to point to the fulfillment and such. But he pointed to them and he described them. And his vision isn't just about the saints and his enemy, the Antichrist. It's about world events. And that's significant. I mean, here we have this prophecy which foretold world events. Things that not only have affected the saints and the church, but the whole world. And that is just huge. And this is why the enemy has tried to cover it up. To hide that he foretold all this. Because when you see that, you see that it validates the authority of scripture and the deity of Messiah. Messiah foretold all these things. And again, that's why the enemy has worked so hard to hide it. Because when the, when the saints understand the truth of the fulfillment of Revelation, they can prove to the world the validity of Scripture and the deity of Messiah. So I'm just going to go through a list. I'm not trying to give the full explanation of these concepts. So I, I do that. I'll do that in future videos. I do that in the book. I'm just alluding to people, major characters that have uh, come and gone during the last 1900 years. And the first one is Simon Magus, and he's the sorcerer, and he's the one who tried to buy the power of the Spirit. And he was rebuked by Peter. And he went to Rome to form what became the Roman Catholic Church. Now, the text doesn't tell you that, but it, it tells you the mystery of iniquity is taking place. And that's what it led to. It led to uh, Simon Magus going and acting like a disciple of Messiah and starting what is the Roman Catholic Church. They say that it was founded on Peter. More accurately, it was founded on Simon Magus the Sorcerer. So that is pointed to by Messiah. And you can actually go to, um, I think I mentioned it in another video, um, you can Google the fall of Simon Magus and look for images. And there's images even at the Vatican that show you when he mimicked trying to jump off the temple, mimicking what Messiah was tempted to do by Satan. He jumped off the temple and he was going to levitate and he was cast down and broke his legs and died a few days later. So you can see that. So, so it's a historical event. Wikipedia will tell you all about it. Messiah foretold five Cretan Roman emperors. And this was, and that includes Marcus Aurelius and Trajan. Those are probably the most well-known of them that we know from history. And this was the first time that the emperors were not Romans. And so they picked them because of their character, because of who they are. And that's really significant. And those five emperors led the empire to its height of power when it was conquering many nations. So again, profound events in the first few centuries that the Roman empire is conquering because of these five Cretan emperors. Messiah pointed to the bloody civil wars in the Roman Empire for 90 years as they were killing each other. Either they were being killed by the sword or they were being poisoned. And so it was just a bloody time of battle for supremacy as the emperor. Messiah pointed to the economic strife in the Roman Empire from excessive taxation to pay for military spending. Sounds like the USA, right? But that's what was going on is they're spending so much money conquering you know, paying for the military to be everywhere, spreading around and all the infrastructure and all that, that excessive taxation was oppressing the Romans. Messiah foretold the famine and pestilence, which came upon the Roman Empire as farmers stopped producing because of the unfair taxes. So they moved into the cities. They stopped farming. They stopped producing. Well, when that happens in mass, then the food supply dries up and you lead to famine and pestilence. And, and Edward Gibbon, historian of the Roman Empire, said that 5,000 people were dying every day. Uh, Messiah foretold a battle for power in the Roman Empire as the leaders of the Eastern and Western Roman Empire fought against each other. Messiah foretold Emperor Constantine stopping the persecution of the saints and holding councils to create Romanism. 
the false church of the enemy. Many people will say that he became a Christian and he defended Christians, but the opposite is true. He actually created Romanism, a false church, to try to destroy Messiah's church from within. Very significant point in time. Uh, Messiah foretold Alaric and the Heruli attacking the Roman Empire, burning everything in their path. So this is, you know, one of the first times that a, a pagan barbarian army is attacking the mighty Roman Empire. Very significant time. Messiah foretold Genseric and the Vandals attacking the coast of the empire. So they're atta attacking the cities on the coastlands, filling the water with blood. He foretold Attila the Hun flashing onto the scene to desolate the area of the major rivers, the Danube, the Rhine, the Po, right? Major events. We all, well, hopefully in history class, we heard about these people. Um, Messiah foretold the Heruli, who attacked the Roman Empire and captured the last West Roman emperor, Romulus Augustus. And that's interesting because Romulus was the founder of Rome and Augustus was the first emperor. So here you have the last Roman, Western Roman emperor, named after the founder of Rome and the first emperor. Messiah foretold the Roman bishop being given power over the fallen Roman Empire as the leader of church and state. And that's significant. So the Western Roman emperor was removed from power, and now the Roman bishop has been given power to take control of the Roman beast kingdom. Messiah foretold the persecution of millions of people deemed as heretics by the Bishop of Rome and his church during the Dark Ages. Messiah foretold the rise of Muhammad as the prophet of the false religion of Islam and the Muslim army who attacked the Roman Empire. Very profound moment in history, and Messiah described it. Again, not by name, but he described the event. And I'll prove that out in my book and in my, in my video series that's coming up. Messiah foretold the Turks, who became the Ottoman Empire, who attacked the Eastern Roman Empire using large cannons in warfare for the first time. So the first time the, an army was using large cannons to knock down the strong walls of Constantinople. Other armies have come to attack Constantinople, but they just couldn't get through the thick walls. Now we just take for granted missiles and all that stuff, but this is a profound uh, moment in time in warfare, and it changed... Uh, Eastern Roman Empire from an Orthodox Christian city to a Muslim one, Istanbul. Very significant change in what's going on in that area of the world. Messiah foretold the Age of Enlightenment in Western Europe as the teaching of Greek returned when Greek scholars fled from the East to the West. So when it was going to be attacked in Constantinople, the Greek scholars took the Greek scriptures with them, went to the West, and started teaching Greek and the scriptures and led to the Enlightenment. Very profound event. Interestingly, the last Eastern Roman emperor was named Constantine after its founder, Constantine. And he was removed from power. So now we have the complete fall of the mighty Roman Empire. Right? So you have the Western Roman Emperor removed from power. Now you got the Eastern Roman Emperor removed from power. And that's profound. I mean, not that long ago, they were conquering the world. And now it's fallen. The Messiah foretold the event of the printing press. And the first book was the Bible. <laughs> right? How has the, how is the uh, printing press changed our lives? Every day. We read books. Every day. I'm able to print my book in a printed format because of the advent of printing press. Well, Messiah alluded to that. Again, not naming it, but he alluded to the very event. And you'll see that in the, in the future videos. Messiah foretold the rise of the Jesuit military order by Ignatius Loyola. And they were kicked out of many countries, including Catholic ones, for their subversive ways. And he, he's pointing to these events. You'll see that played out in, in Revelation 13, how the general rose to power. Messiah pointed to the Spanish Inquisition, when millions of people who were deemed as heretics were tortured and killed. Messiah pointed to the bloody French Revolution and the beheading of the King of France, Marie Antoinette. Messiah pointed to the rise of Napoleon and his mighty army who scorched Europe in bloody battles. Messiah pointed to the drying up of the Ottoman Empire as they lost control of a vast territory, including the Middle East and Palestine, and they were only left with the modern country of Turkey. So he foretold that. You can Google the drying up of the Ottoman Empire, and you'll see that on Wikipedia. You'll see Napoleon. You'll see the French Revolution. You'll see the Spanish Inquisition. This is all history that was foretold by Messiah.
Messiah foretold the Khazars, who originated in Eastern Europe, who had Turkish Mongol blood. Well, they converted to Judaism around the 9th century. So they're Jews by religion, not by blood. Messiah foretold the Baron Rothschilds, and that seems absurd, but I will prove it out to you. And they funded the rebuilding of Palestine long before the state of Israel was created. So he's pointing to Lord Rothschild, right? And it's, it's a title. It's not just one person, but it's the leader of the Rothschild family. He's called Baron Rothschild, Lord Rothschild. And he was there rebuilding Palestine way before Israel was created. And he pointed to the modern state of Israel being filled with Ashkenazi Jews, who again are Jews by religion, not blood. And that's a crazy list. And, you know, it might seem absurd to say that Messiah described those things, but I assure you he did. I prove it out in my book in detail. I will prove it out and I'll point to it, you know, in future videos coming up. But that's, that's just a profound list. And, and that's why the enemy wants to hide the fulfillment of Revelation. That's why the enemy has propped up people who teach that it's all futuristic. So you think it's in the future. So you don't see how it's been fulfilled in amazing detail in the past and how it's not just about the church. It's not just about the Antichrist, but it's about what happened in the world. World events, world changing events were described, pointed to by Messiah. And that's profound because again, when the saints, because I say when, because it's going to happen. When the saints understand the truth of the fulfillment of revelation, they will cast down the power of the enemy. They will set the captives free and there'll be a great harvest for the kingdom because everything will be exposed. The whole deception will be exposed and people will see how they've been deceived and they will see how Messiah has worked through his church to fight against the Roman beast kingdom. So this is amazingly significant to know that these historical events have taken place. And that's it. That's just, this is just really a summary. It just helps, you know, what I found to be true is that instead of get diving right into the verse by verse explanations, uh, you know, even in my book, it helps to give overviews. It helps to give the big picture. See, see what's going on. So like on my last video, and you you looked at the different events that happened to the saints during the last 1900 years, which Messiah pointed to. But the futurists tell you, no, no, Messiah didn't have anything to say about that. And the same is true here. All these events, all these major events in the futurists will tell you, oh yeah, Messiah had nothing to say about any of that. But they're all events that affected the world and they affected the saints. And Messiah pointed to every single one of them. So I'm just trying to give overviews to give the big picture before we dive into the details. That's it for today. I've included a link to my YouTube Revelation Timeline Decoded Bible Study playlist. So you can see all the videos. Don't want you to miss any. Um, I've included a link to my Revelation Timeline Decoded book in the description. Um, please like the video. Do the thumbs up if it helped you. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done so. And uh, I will talk to you soon. Love y'all. Shalom.